Hey everybody, this is Miss Faye and welcome to my world. Let's talk about uh, the narcissist. I dated a narcissist for six years and as it turns out, he was a covert narcissist and on the DL. Okay, I guess, I guess being covert and DL kind of in the narcissist world seems to go hand in hand. You know, I, I don't know if all narcissists are on the DL. I have, they probably have the tendency because it's the same demon that possesses them, that makes them do these things. But <clears throat> I want to tell you about my experience with the DL covert narcissist. So hopefully you, if you're with somebody like this, or if you meet somebody like this, uh, hopefully I can say something to help you not even get involved with them, period. Okay. First thing, I met him online. <clears throat> and I discourage anyone from going online trying to meet somebody. It's a bad, it's a very bad idea because there are so, it's a narcissist playground. He's looking for a supply. So <laughs> you don't need to be online looking for anybody, period. What I'm going to say is there may be some genuine people online, but you won't meet them because there's so many people out here trying to scam you, narcissists looking for supply and all sorts of sociopaths, you know, psychopaths. All these people are online dating and all that. That's why I said you you won't meet that person online. The odds are way, way, way against you. And you'll probably get hurt. Now, dealing with uh, the, the covert narcissist, when I met him, I didn't have the faintest idea about narcissists. I'd heard the term, but it didn't mean anything really to me. But uh, when when we met, everything was wonderful. Everything everything was absolutely wonderful. You see, but but he had some controlling ways even from the beginning. And you look out for that. If you meet somebody and they want to, <laughs> they want to reinvent you. They want to, uh, first they'll take you shopping, but then they want to pick out your clothes. That's a, that's a red flag. Don't, you know, a lot of times you can fall into that because if he takes you to a fancy place and all of these beautiful, beautiful clothes are there, you still should be able to pick out what you like, not what he likes. And don't just go with it because he likes it. In the beginning, I did that. I did that. I, you know, whatever he picked out, you know, I said, you know, I prefer, I, I, I think I did tell him in the beginning that I preferred this, this kind of fabric or whatever, but he always picked what he liked. And force me to get it. Well, I'm going to buy it anyway. You know, like that. But I just never wore it. It's, it's still back there hanging in the closet. I just... wasn't my taste. If you do that, you know, you've already given your power away to him about, you know, making your own decisions about what's good for you. And you don't want to... You don't want to get on that train because he will be controlling everything you wear and how you look and all of that. I know he wanted me to to wear the, the long lashes and all that, but that's not me. 
that's not that, you know, I didn't choose to do that. He chose for me to do that. And I mean, if we went, if we were going out or whatever, he would stop me right at the door and say, I think you forgot something. Whether it was either lipstick or the eyelashes or things like that. That's a narcissist. Now, the covert part comes in because other people don't see this part of him. Other people look at him like he's just a quiet, shy guy. And that's probably what attracted me to him because I'd been with the loud, you know, flamboyant people, you know, and I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to try to find a nice, decent guy, you know, just quiet, not really who my style but somebody different. And I run into the narcissist. And I probably did because the universe figured that there was a lesson I needed to learn. And that's why if you're with one or, <laughs> or healing from one, just know that that was just a lesson the universe needed for you to learn. And nine times out of 10, if you're still in the situation, you have not passed the test yet. You see, the life, remember, is about lessons and blessings. That's why you're here to learn lessons and blessings. So if you don't pass a lesson, you have to keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it until you pass it. And then you can move on to something better. You see? A lot of people miss that, you know, and that's why um, a lot of us meet the same type of man every time, or woman. You meet the same type every time, every time, every time, because you didn't learn a lesson from the first time or the second time or the third time. So you went right back in the cycle again. That's the way that the universe works. So now I'm with this narcissist and I'm I'm really liking him and you know I take the hits and just keep on going you know it's he's often criticizing me when no criticism is needed and trying to make me feel bad for nothing at all you know he'll just find something and if you're with a partner you know we they narcissists have a way of making you talk about yourself a lot. They don't talk about themselves very much. You see? Unless you put them on the spot about something and answer that and that's pretty much it. But they don't really talk about themselves because their intent is to use what you said against you. You see? They'll turn it right back against to hurt you with. And that's what he did. A lot of times, a lot of times. I, uh, at that time when I met him, I was a photographer. And, uh, you know, him being, him being my partner, I say, okay, you know, I have an exhibit or whatever. Come along with me, you know, and we go out there. As soon as we get out there. Now, I've done this. This, this is my business. I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> I go out there. And all of a sudden, now he's telling me how to set up, how to do this, how to do that. You know, and when I'm, when I tell him, no, stay in your lane. I know how to do this. He gets furious. He gets furious. Now you're trying to do business and you got this child, <laughs> this child over here acting up. Because when, when these, I'm going to talk about the covert because that's the one I have a lot of experience with. I have the experience with the grandiose too, but the covert is the one I was intimate with. And uh, I found that when he got angry, it took him all the way back to his childhood. He act like a three-year-old. And that's probably where the trauma happened where it first started happening, when he was around three, three or four. He goes all the way back there. 
So now if you're with a covert, you'll see that. They they don't they don't like to be questioned. They just want you to meet their meet meet their needs. And they have a lot of them. You will find that you will hardly have time for yourself because you are constantly taking care of them. That's right. Constantly taking care of them. I mean, this man had every kind of need. Something's wrong with his leg. Something's wrong with his foot. Something's wrong with his back. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's just him. And then, you know, he'd like to go out and do activities, but he don't want to, he doesn't want to go out and do them by himself because he needs somebody to telling him how well he's doing and making him feel good and all of that. He needs the adoration. That's a narcissist. They can't do anything without people being around because that's their supply. They absolutely have to have that. And they have to have somebody around who's pumping him up and making him feel good. Well, for me, I'm an Aquarian. I'm a natural humanitarian. So helping helping somebody and trying to, you know, bring them up from the mire, I, I was naturally doing. And he was taking full advantage of that. Now that I'm more spiritual, I've learned better and I've learned to take care of myself. Take care of myself. I'm not looking for anybody that that wants a crutch. Now, the the narcissist, he not only drains you from all of your energy, but he also wants sex on demand <laughs> whether whether it, it doesn't matter whether you're in the mood or what he's not going to try to even get you in the mood because it's all about him he doesn't you are just an object of his supply and he that's how he will treat you you see so he'll never look back and say, are you okay? How you doing? Or, you know, how do you feel today? He could care less. He could care less about you. And when he's in, now the covert, when he's in front of other people, you will see, if you just stand back from him and watch him with other people, you'll be amazed. He seems to be caring and talking to them in a nice manner and all of that. And then he, when he'll come near you, it's all negative. It's all criticism. It's all just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Now, this is funny. Me being a photographer, I had the occasion to take photos of him with his family, with his friends and things like that. So one day I just happened to to look at the photos and just to, I don't know what, what I was looking for because the photos had already been printed. So they've already been, you know, looked in that way. But I was looking at the photos and I just noticed how happy he looked with other people. He's smiling and looking at them and everything's wonderful. But in the photos with me, he was looking like <laughs> men in pictures. He almost had his back turned to me. He's looking up in the air. No, no smile on his face at all. And I mean, this is not just one picture. This was several pictures after I looked at it. After I looked at it, that's right. And it's probably, the time that I looked at it was probably after he discarded me and I'm trying to find out exactly what happened in the whole thing. But if you're with, if you're with a, a narcissist, 
if you're with a narcissist, look at some of the pictures that you took with him and, and see what you see. And see what you, you can tell a lot from a photo. You can tell a whole lot from a photo. And if you if, if if you have a family photo and a narcissist in there, you can tell a lot from the family photo. The relationship, the relationship with the narcissist. Now, all right, so the narcissist, you know, he's abusing you emotionally. You know, he's, I say abusing you sexually because you're not enjoying it. You're enjoying having sex with him. There's no intimacy. It's just the action of sex. Now, I'll tell you one big mistake that I did when I met him. When we dated, we were both intoxicated some way or the other. I wasn't spiritual then. I was out there. So we were both intoxicated. So <laughs> a lot of stuff that he did or said, it didn't faze me because I was intoxicated. A lot of times, I remember one time maybe told him, I said, the only way that I can deal with you is if I'm intoxicated. And then we just la laughed it off, but when I thought about it, that was true. He was abu abusing me so bad until I was drinking or whatever to numb the pain. To numb the pain so that I could deal with him. You see? And I'm going to tell you, when he discarded me, that was a blessing. That When it happened, of course... I was devastated and I thought it was the worst thing ever. But after I healed, I realized what a blessing it was to go through the experience and what a blessing it was that I came out a better person than I was before. But that comes through healing and that's work it took me almost two and a half years to heal from that that's right about two and a half years and that's after i'd been with him six years and then he it was a hit and miss he would just keep coming coming back and i'd be with him keep coming back and i'd be keep coming back until i just found to say that's enough that's enough i can't heal like this I have to get away from you to heal. And that's what I did. You see? The covert narcissist is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. You don't see them coming. You don't see them coming. But if you're aware of what they do, this way, in a way, you can see them coming. You can spot them right away. You see? He's going to try to control you right off the bat. Right off the bat. Then he's going to try to sexualize you. Sex right away, just like, just like the control. And he's doing this. Why, even in the love bombing stage, even when he's making you feel wonderful and, and all of that. See, he's giving you more sweet than sour at that stage. He's still doing those control things. You see? And he's still sexualizing you. But if you're intoxicated, you don't know if you're getting intimacy or not. You, you know what I mean? You just kind of, you know, going through the motions. And that's where a lot of us get get stuck, right there, right there, that we get intoxicated trying to get to know these people, and you can't. That's impossible. The covert narcissist 
is an evil. He, he is an evil being out to destroy you. So he love bombs you. He gives you a lot of sweet then. But then after the love bombing stage, that's when he really digs in to devalue you. Period. So whatever you try to do, do trying to do in your life, is something wrong with that. I know uh, I, it some, just came into my thought. I am a gardener. I love being out in the garden. You know, um, we have the seasons here where I live now, but in the springtime and in the summer, I'm outside. I love it. So <laughs> one day I was trimming hedges in the garden or whatever I was doing. And uh, I mistakenly gave the shears to the narcissist. And when I turned around, he had literally just chopped down a lot of a lot of my plants that I would have to wait the next spring for them to come back. I say, oh no, oh no, that's okay. I don't I'll I'll just take care of it. And then I let that go. But he knew exactly what he was doing. No matter what it is that you enjoy, he plans to take the joy out of it. No matter what it is. I know mine never liked to see me having fun about anything. About anything. He wanted all of my attention to be on him while he's devaluing me. You see? I would, you know, try to go off into another place or whatever. And he come and get me. <laughs> he come and get me. Come on. You know? And so I'd have to be with him catering to him. Catering to him. And if you're with a narcissist, you're catering to him. In every way. That's how he sucks your energy out. You know, sucks your energy just right out of you. Right out of you. Now, when I was with the covert narcissist, there were some red flags about him being on the DL too. That I looked at it, but I disregarded it. When we were when we were first dating, it was this guy who he says uh, they were friends from a long from childhood or whatever that would call call him on the phone and they would be arguing back and forth. Like men don't usually do that. Men usually punch it out and it's over. But they were like having this argue back and forth about little petty stuff all the time, it seemed. I didn't pay much attention to it. You know, he says he's a childhood friend and all that. And plus... See, I I didn't know anything about these DL men either. I didn't know anything about it. So, anyway, the guy ends up uh, marrying somebody, which my narcissist went to the wedding. I wasn't invited to go with him. He went to the wedding. I guess he was, you know... the best man, I guess he was, whatever. But anyway, that was an occasion that he did take me over to this fellow's house. The fellow was having some sort of party or something. And the fellow treated me as if a jealous woman would. This fella, that was his childhood friend, that he even admitted that they lived together at one time. Of course, you don't think about it that they, you know, men, you know, that when they're growing up, they have an apartment together because they want to share the whatever, you know, and, and uh, I didn't think anything about it. But this guy, I mean, he acted out just like a jealous woman. You know, he would um, grab me and uh, try to take me in some part of the house or whatever and just walk off and leave me there. You know, just crazy stuff he would do. Crazy stuff he would do. You see? 
And then there was another occasion that he acted the same way, you know? So after uh, my narcissist discarded me and, you know, this was doing the hit and miss stage, coming back and forth and all of that. He, he was out of my house, you know, but I was still seeing him on occasion, you know, and uh, I told him about the way that his friend, why did his friend act like that? Because during this time, see, I'm trying to understand what, what it's all about, what, what was really happening. So I asked him about it. Why, why was your friend acting like that? You know, he was acting like a jealous woman. So my narcissist had the nerve to say, well, you know what? I always wondered about him. <laughs> if you caught that, he was really telling on himself because those two had been together sexually. They had been together sexually and still probably were. You know, even during, even the time that the guy was married, I'm pretty sure they were still seeing each other. Because, I mean, his name, he would still call him up, asking him, do you need anything? What man calls another man and asks him if he needs anything? See, all those things just kind of, I just let them go by because my intuition, honestly, was telling me that something was wrong here. Something was wrong. Every, every little thing that happened, it was telling me, but I didn't want to believe it. So I just put it behind me. Just put it behind me. You see? But, yeah, these men... These, these men are out here having sex with each other. And the covert narcissist, he, he loves the gay men and the trans men and all that kind of thing. He loves that. But he doesn't want anybody to know that he's, he's gay. But he needs a woman to camouflage his gayness. To camouflage his gayness. Now, then, now in the the uh, black culture, we call it on the DL. But believe me, there's some white men that do the same thing. They just don't call it on the DL. They just I don't know what they call it, but they're doing the same thing, especially if they're in some position of status where they need a wife. So they cover it. They, you know, know, they're secretive, secretive. That's what covert means. You, you're undercover. But see, the covert narcissist is a dangerous person because he could destroy you physically and emotionally. Now, another thing they'll do is alienate you from your family and your friends. And you might not realize what's going on. You might just think that, you know, for instance, I've seen where the narcissist would answer the phone whenever, it, I guess, you know, look on the phone and see it's your family calling. He answer the phone and make the person feel so uncomfortable that they won't call back. For instance, say, why are you calling here? Uh, did something happen? You know, uh, maybe she can call you back. You know, he'll run interference because he really wants to cut that tie between you and your family. And in the meanwhile, he's in your ear telling you little things about your family, but, you know, as if you didn't see, you know, like you shouldn't really be with them now. And he does, will do the same thing with your friends. Now, a couple of times, if your friends try to contact you, and he's running interference after a while. They're just going to give up. And you just think that your friend dropped you unless you are diligent and go and try to find out what happened. And i tell you the truth. A lot of us don't. Number one, the narcissist has us running and going so much until you, you don't think about it much. And plus, he's making you feel like you need him for everything. That you need him. You can't survive without him. 
You see, he's working all of these mind games on you until you just forget about your friend. It could have been a best friend. It could have been a trusted friend. But the narcissist will, will make sure that he or she gets rid of that friend. Because the narcissist control you better. Everything that happened between you and the narcissist. See, if you had a best friend, you'd go running off to console with your friend. He didn't want that. He wants to cut everything so that you're trapped. You have nobody to talk to. Because he's already made your family feel funny about even trying to contact you. You see, that's what the covert or the grandiose narcissist would do. Either one would do that. But the covert, again, he's sneaky with it. He's very, very slick with it. He'll always be in your ear telling you, you know, something's wrong. I know when I was uh, working my photography business, you know, there were some occasions that I should not have missed. And I let him talk to me about, you know, about that business of, of taking that um, appointment or whatever. And I didn't take it on his advice. And I shouldn't have. So, whatever you're doing, if you're with a narcissist, don't... <laughs> Don't let him run your business because he he will destroy it. He will actually destroy it. He, he will not come in there and try to support you in it and make sure it grows. And I, No, he's not about that. He's not about that. Now, the other thing that a covert narcissist would do, he will smear your name behind your back. Yes, he will. He'll go around the people that he knows and, and talk about you or what an awful person that you are. And so when the family comes around, they're looking at you funny and you don't know why. You don't know why. Because the narcissist has set you up. He set you up. You see? And uh, his family... They're probably all narcissists, so they, <laughs> you know, and they're going to support the narcissist. So, you know, you don't really have much help there. But just, uh, just be able to identify him before he does too much damage, before you lose your heart in it. You lose your heart in it. That's why I advise um, you to take your time with people. Don't run and have sex with them right away. Don't be intoxicated when you're trying to get to know somebody. And if they get intoxicated, you need to walk away from that. You need to walk away from that. There's no good in that. See? Now, the covert narcissist, he's also very cruel. Very cruel cruel he is he will constantly try to break you down into tears now with the men i'm sure it, <laughs> that that narcissist can make them break down too whatever it can make them break down but see a man if it, a lot of times if it gets too much for a man a man just walk off and leave it where a woman sometimes she has not positioned herself that she can walk off and leave it you know, she's got kids there. She's got to think about them. Maybe he controls all the finances. A lot of times that happens, so she has to stay. Where a man, man, if he's with a narcissist woman, he'll go off. Now, he'll leave his kids there to suffer with her. But he'll take off. You see? That's why it's so important that you protect yourself. And in loving yourself, you're not going to let anybody take advantage of you. And the narcissist is all about trying to take advantage of you. And he would do that from the very beginning to the end. It never stops. It will just get worse and worse and worse. And if you take him back after he's discarded you and left you broken, 
and he'll come crawling back and he won't apologize now, but he'll come crawling back and love bomb you again. And if you hop on that wheel, you will repeat the same cycle over again with him. Again, I'm going to say this again, because this is a lesson. That's what it is. It's a lesson. You didn't, you didn't do anything in your life to make this narcissist come. But the universe figured it was time for you to learn this lesson so that you could ascend to a better existence. But you got to pass the test. You cannot continue with the narcissist. That's not passing the test. You got to let him go. You got to let it go. You have to heal. You have to heal. And then when you get to the point to whether you can look back at the situation, the situation and appreciate it for what it was, then you are truly healed. You are truly healed from it. But unfortunately, a lot of us don't don't go for the healing. We just jump into another relationship. Oh, that was that was just a bad one. They jump into a relationship. And the next one, it's got a different face. But it could be the same thing. You will repeat the same thing over and over again until you heal from it. It'd be in different forms in different ways. Maybe this one may not be as bad as he was, or this one could be worse than he was. This one could beat you. Maybe he didn't beat you. This one could do a lot of things. Plus, remember that they're out there sleeping with all sorts of people. Men, women, they have supply everywhere. They go. They have to have it. And you supply too. So don't, don't, you can't sit up and say, well, at least I hope he's not cheating. You're just fooling yourself. You are just fooling yourself. Yes, he is cheating. He is cheating. He needs the supply. He wants different supply. He don't want the same supply all the time. He know you're going to be there. You're going to be there. But he wants, he wants to sample different different supply and he wants an abundance of supply he's here to get supply that's why that's why he's here that's why this evil energy is here to just gobble you up gobble you up just be careful when you meet people take your time what's the hurry Take your time. Don't have sex with them. Don't do it. Okay. And like I said back there, don't tell them that you're trying to hold yourself from marriage. Don't tell them that either. You can tell them I'm celibate for now. Or I'm celibate. Don't even put the for now part in. Just say I'm celibate. See how they handle that, because I'm going to tell you something. If a person is really interested in you, and they would like to have you in their lives, genuinely, when you tell them that, they're not going to run away. They probably want to know you more. More about you. What do you like? What do you do? You understand? He tells you what he does, so she tells you what she does. And you know, then you really get to know each other. You get to meet the families. Make sure all, everything is good. You got to know these people before you before you jump into these situations because somebody told you that you needed to, you needed a man or you needed a woman. Well, men, I'm, I'm gonna say this: <laughs> a lot of men. 
would prefer not to marry. A lot of men would prefer not to marry, but they will marry. Now check this out. They will marry for certain benefits. That benefit being, you know, sex is at home. They don't have to go roaming around for it. Although they will. <laughs> I'm talking about their mind to marry. They have somebody to take care of them. That's right. Been a long time since they left mama's house. You're going to cook. You know, you know your job. You're going to cook, clean. If you have kids, they're your responsibility. Now, I see today that the younger men are changing it. That they are stepping up to take care of their children. And that's wonderful. Of course, those men are not narcissists. Those, those men are not narcissists. A narcissist is not going to do that. He, really, he doesn't care about his children in that way. Everybody he sees is supplied to him. And that is it. That is it. So, please take care of yourself. The covert narcissist is out here. He's everywhere. But he's, he's the one in the shadows. He's not going to be the one that's going to be out and talking loud and all of that. He's going to be the one in the shadows. And so, he's the one that you'll probably spot and say, oh, he's quiet. Let's go over there and... See what he's about. You watch yourself. You watch yourself. So, anyway, I hope that uh, I made it clear what I was trying to get over to you about the covert narcissist and what you can you can look out for. You see, if, if you meet somebody and all of a sudden, you know, he's got a problem with your family. I don't know if they, if it's outright of what mine did, mine did, you know, you, you want to walk away from that. You don't even want to deal with it. So I want to thank you again for spending the time uh, to watch this video. And I hope that I said something that can help someone from making the same mistakes that I made and to uh, go toward healing. So hope to see you next time.